So one of the leading ways in which people probably filter down their preferences for a watch is through the wearability or the case size. I know I have done this. I know other people do this quite often. So what we've been doing in a series on this channel is picking out some of the best watches at a specific case size. Here today, 36 millimeters. So we have compiled a list here of some of the best watches for 36 millimeters. I cannot include all of the watches at 36 millimeters because that would be way too comprehensive and I just do not have the time to be in front of the camera for hours. But we do have 21 watches, I think, or over 20 watches on this list. My hope for this video is to just be a jumping off point for those that have a preference for a case size, what is available to me as an enthusiast, and what are some different routes I can go through. I'm going to look at a variety of different price points, variety of different styles. I think we have three major categories here. One's going to be of the diver category, which I will warn right now, not not gonna be as long as typical. Then we have the dress category and then more of the everyday style category at the end. So if you're into 36 millimeter watches, well, you're here watching this video, aren't you? If you are that person, you probably would also like our article looking at some of the best watches for smaller wrists in the industry. This is looking at watches below 40 millimeters in case size, variety of different styles. So if you want say a dive watch at 38 millimeters or a chronograph at 39 millimeters, we'll have some great recommendations for you in that article. Check it out in the link in the description down below. So now let's kick us off with the dive watch category. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, dive watches, 36 millimeters, not as many as some of the other styles that we're going to see on this list. But let's kick us off with the Marathon MSAR Arctic. So this is the smaller version of the search and rescue series from Marathon. These are their professional dive watches, tritium on their dials and the Arctic is going to be in reference to its white dial and approach. Now I'll be the first to warn you that 36 millimeters here with Marathon is measuring at the bezel, not the central case. So this wears smaller than 36 millimeters. I would say it wears like a 35, but it has this design style with this deep seated dial and a history that is very unique to Marathon. They've been producing military watches uh, since World War II uh, when providing watches for the Allied Forces, a Canadian company, Swiss made watches, 300 meters of water resistance, SW200 on the inside, and a case and a package at 36 millimeters at that out bezel with those heavy notches. Another watch that is worthy of the mention here in the dive category is going to be Longines with their Legend Diver. It is available at 42 millimeters as well as 36 millimeters. And the 36 millimeter with this format of a compressor style case creates a pretty compelling package. Now this is going to have two different crowns on this watch. One is going to activate the internal rotating bezel for that uh, elapsed time. And then you also have another one that would be your general crown for timekeeping functions, adjusting the hands, hand winding the movement on the inside. 36 millimeters wears pretty true to that, if not a little bit larger in this case, given the fact that this is all seated on one singular surface of the dial rather than having an external bezel. 11.9 millimeters in thickness, uh, automatic movement on the inside and still getting a healthy water resistance rating despite being downsized. And one other thing I'll mention about the Legend Diver, great history, but also in recent history is probably one of the watches responsible for the vintage inspired trend of dive watches that has just absolutely taken over in the last decade. This actually came out as a reissue in 2012, the Legend Diver family. Speaking of heritage inspired divers, here we have the Oris Diver 65 at 36 millimeters. Now, Oris is not afraid of a 36 millimeter case size as you will see throughout this video, but they're really not afraid of offering up pretty much any case size. Uh, if you're looking at other small dive watches from the brand, you can look at the Oris Diver 65 cotton candies at 38 millimeters. Uh, but at 36 millimeters, it creates even a smaller case presence. Uh, I would say this wears in comparison to the Longines that we just talked about to the MSAR, probably in between on the wearability scale. Uh, has a dome crystal on top, so it has 12.5 millimeters in thickness with some of that coming from that dome crystal. This watch has 100 meters of water resistance, so perhaps not as professionally equipped as some of the other divers on this list. But considering the ISO 6425 standard is 100 meters of water resistance, I always get annoyed when people say that this isn't enough to be a dive watch. I mean, I think that's really silly. If you think about 100 meters, that's like jumping off a 30 story building if you were going to do it above ground. So just because it's below the water surface, for some reason we think about it in a different way where it's like, oh, that's not deep enough. But that's a fight for another
other day. In terms of this watch, different dial colors to choose from, has more of this vintage hue when it comes to the markers. SW200 on the inside, comes from the year 1965, as you would expect. Available on a bracelet with a very heavy taper. Now, for our final dive watch here, we have the Breitling Super Ocean 36. And this has become an increasingly popular watch as a byproduct of walking the line of the size, as well as being viable with its different dial colors for both men and women. At 36 millimeters and it's lug to lug, it is going to wear rather small on wrist, 200 meters of water resistance and getting an Eta caliber on the inside. A lot of different variety of colors to choose from a history of the Super Ocean that is well established as one of the leading dive watches for over a half century since 1957. And also comes with many color and strap bracelet options to go along with those different pops of color. Shifting into the dress category, we're gonna kick us off with an entry level position with the Orient Bambino 36. So 36 is one that is a little to the smaller scale of the Bambino family. You have the 40 and a half millimeter cases, then you have the other popular now 38 millimeter Bambinos and the 36 for those that want that more traditional mid 20th century approach to its case and size. Uh, so 36.4 if we're going to be exact for that diameter, thickness of 12.5 millimeters and a compact lug to lug, we're talking 42 millimeters here. Comes equipped with a mineral crystal and another great thing about Orient is going to be the movements on the inside. Here you have the F6724. This is a manufacturer movement for Orient. Nice tolerances in terms of its range of accepted deviation out of the box and typically run very well when you get them on the wrist. Let's give a little tip of the cap to a micro brand here with the Baltic MR01. This is one of my personal favorites just because of what it's bringing to the table from a design standpoint, and then also doing something interesting on the back. Now, the movement is known as the Hangzhou Caliber 5000A. So this is a Chinese produced movement, but it does absolutely look the part. It is a micro rotor movement, which is very unique. This is typically uh, an exclusive type of oscillating weight that is only seen at the high, high end of watchmaking. But to see it at under $1,000, I think deserves a tip of the cap. I also have a case diameter of 36 millimeters, 9.9 .9 millimeters in thickness, and a lug to lug of 44 millimeters, wearing slightly larger than 36 millimeters. I would say it wears closer to a 37 or so. And the finishing on the front of the watch in the dial is still very well done. It has more this blasted type of effect with this texture granular pattern. As I mentioned, Oris is going to be no stranger on this list here. One of my favorites from the brand, actually my favorite from the brand, if I'm being completely honest, this is the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date. 36 millimeters. This is a collection that spans now a variety of different case sizes. 36 millimeters was one of those conventional case options from uh, the brand. Uh, you're also at 36 millimeters going to get a bronze case option. So there's a little bit to get lost in when it comes to this model family. This model family can date back to 1938. So historically speaking, it's one of the most important from Oris. You also are going to have the optionality for different dial colors uh, to go along with the different case materials. SW200 on the inside, and when you're talking about the pointer date as a complication, one of my favorites, and also not breaking the bank in the process to get something like this. If you typically look at other brands that are utilizing a pointer date, it's usually, again, higher up in the hierarchy of things, more traditional in its approach. This watch just, to me, brings together both a everyday style that can be viable for a lot of different scenarios. I know I have this in the dress category, but it does offer different flexibility. And then it also has these romantic ideas of the cathedral hands, the pointer date function, some of the numerals and the railway track, uh, as well as that coin edge bezel. It's a cool combination of elements that I think works together with great cohesion. Now, when most people think of the SBGW collection, they think of the 37 millimeter options, mostly the 231 as an example, one of the most, I would say, value-packed dress watches in all of luxury watchmaking. The watch we have here, though, is also an SBGW family member, but comes in with a slightly modified case at 36.5 millimeters. And this is the SBGW291 to be specific, 11.6 millimeters in thickness, lug to lug of 42.7 millimeters, while getting 100 meters of water resistance in the 9S64 movement on the inside. Uh, it has a 44GS case, Zeratsu polishing, the 9S64 
offers a 72 hour power reserve and nice decoration for the price range in which it represents. Now, next up we have the Rolex Datejust 36. Now, Rolex is one of these brands that just dominates 36 millimeters. I think it almost put 36 millimeters on the map in many ways when it comes to this everyday viability. If it was not for the Datejust, uh, I don't think the 36 millimeter case would be as widely accepted as it is today. 36 millimeter case, I think Jubilee bracelet, fluted bezel, this is the combination that to me exemplifies what the Datejust is all about. Uh, 3235 movement on the inside, variety of dial colors to choose from, 100 meters of water resistance, a model family that goes back to 1945. And it's crazy now because it's when thinking of Rolex, you think of the hype models. There are so many Datejust models within the family that I think people get lost in the mix and there haven't been like those select ones that have just taken off. It's almost just kind of to be expected. Like the Datejust is like just such a no brainer pick that doesn't really get any hype associated with it. But if you're talking about somebody that it doesn't care about the hype or appreciating value of a Rolex. They just want a great versatile watch. You could argue the Datejust still to this day is the best that Rolex has to offer. Now a model family that is very dear to my heart is the Omega Constellation family. I have my own preferences on the peak of the Constellation. I like kind of those C case examples and then also those pie pan examples of the 1960s, 70s. I think that was like just beautiful, beautiful design coming together for the Constellation. Then in the 1980s, you saw the Griff Claw variant, the Manhattan case style. And that's what we're looking at here, which uh, and to my own personal preference, isn't as much to my taste, but this is an iconic looking design. And it's one of the most famous watches globally for Omega uh, in its design language. If you're looking at Asia specifically, this this is a watch that the Constellation family that is held in some of the highest regard and is like that luxury staple uh, and sells just as well as the Speedmaster and Seamaster, which is crazy within the enthusiast crowd because we're so consumed in the sports side of things. But this is an iconic model family without question. 36 millimeters, there are a variety of different styles here uh, for the Constellation family to get lost in. 8800 caliber on the inside, Meta certified movement. The Constellation line originates from 1952 and I would say is the family family for Omega that is the pinnacle of their chronometry. And Omega is a brand that values chronometry, I would say almost against any other luxury brand in their price segments. And I think this is important because when you're talking about the defined identity of Omega, uh, you do have to mention the Constellation family as that important pillar uh, that it is. Next, we have the Vacheron Constantin Patrimony. So this is their simple but pure dress watch coming in an ultra thin case format. 36 millimeters, but a thickness of 6.72 millimeters. And then there's smaller manual caliber. This is the VC 1400 on the inside. Now the Patrimony is a model that is minimalist in its approach and its design it has some refinement. It's ultra thin in its construction, many different variants to get lost in, different case materials to go along with it. Manual caliber with a Geneva seal, also beautifully decorated in the process. And it's a wonderful answer to some different high horology brands and being an understated option. So many of you are aware that I love the Longa One and the Longa One at 38 and a half millimeters is to me an amazing size. But even further in talking about developing symmetry and still making the sum of its parts feel balanced, Longa is able to do that even at a smaller case size at 36.8 millimeters with the little Longa One. This is, as you would imagine, a smaller Longa One, 9.5 millimeters in thickness, L121.1 movement on the inside. You also have an extensive model family here in terms of some different styles. Uh, my personal favorite, and I can't recall exactly what year it came out, but that Aventurine Moon Phase version, simply stunning. The original Longa One unveiled in 1994, the little Longa available in 1997, and it was marketed more towards women or those with slender wrists. I think this is absolutely a unisex watch if you wanted to go in this direction. And also is one of the model families that offers up guilloche on the dials as well. Now we shift into the field and everyday category. First up here, we have the new Seiko 5 Sports Collection with the field watches. Uh, here the SRPJ81. So the field Field watch uh, design language from the Seiko 5 family is not anything new. It's been long established. If you can go back to even the earliest days of the Seiko Laurel or the Alpinus, 
These are models that very much came from this design DNA. These take down the case size of 36 millimeters, offers up pretty much across the board the same conventional everyday uh, fit and finish that you would want. 100 meters of water resistance, wearable lug to lug at 44.4 millimeters, and a variety of dial colors to choose from if you look at other variants outside of this reference. So next we have the Hamilton Khaki Aviation Pilot Pioneer. The confusing thing about this watch is the case size. If you just look at their spec sheet, you think that, okay, this is not 36 millimeters, but if you ever tried this on, if you actually look at the measurements and actually wear this across the wrist, it is closer to 36 millimeters compared to how they usually approach and uh, classify this watch. Uh, wearable in its case, a unique rounded off style with its lugs, lug to lug of 41.5 millimeters and a water resistance rating of 100 meters. It does have a mineral crystal, which is a little strange for this watch. Uh, it's designed in a direct point of inspiration from a 1970s reference known as the W10. It was a pilot watch made for the British Ministry of Defense from 1973 to 1976. Hamilton, of course, when it comes to military style watches and actual military issued watches, uh, has a history as good as any. Shifting gears into a bit more of a refined everyday sporty watch, we have the Bomb and Mercier Riviera. So this is available now in a variety of different case sizes. When looking at the Riviera collection, you have 36 millimeters, uh, 42 millimeters, and 39 millimeters uh, new this year. 36 millimeters, I think is a great case size for this case specifically because of just how it is structured at the point of the integration of the lugs and the strap. Whereas slightly larger at, I would say like a 37 millimeter on wrist. So if that's something you like, this could be right up your alley, 44 millimeter lug to lug. Water resistance leaves a little bit to be desired compared to other Riviera models. One important note when mentioning the Riviera is it was created in 1973. The Royal Oak was 1972. The Nautilus was 1976. So it was right there when it comes to being involved in this integrated trend, although this is definitely different than it was uh, in years prior in 1973. The original framework was established then, so I think you do have to give them some kudos for that. Next up, we have the Tudor Black Bay 36. These were just updated with new manufacturer calibers on the inside, new dial colors to choose from, but it comes in with the specs that you know and love from this model family beyond that. Wearable case at 36 millimeters, lug to lug of 44 millimeters, still relatively thin at 10.5 millimeters, and 100 meters of water resistance, now getting those MT calibers on the inside, extended power reserve of 70 hours. These were some of the watches when initially unveiled that Yes, the buzz is gonna to go to the 54. It's gonna to go to the new burgundy model. It's gonna go maybe to the new GMT with its opaline white dial. But these almost got lost in the mix as a byproduct of everybody expecting these to come out at some point and now they're here. And we saw these other things that we didn't see coming and those just took the spotlight away from these models. But if you're talking about viability on a wide variety of wrists and just being a great do-it-all watch, you could argue that this is as good as any from Tudor they have to offer in their contemporary catalog. Next, we look at a pillar in pilot watches, and that is IWC here with their Pilot Watch Automatic 36. This is going to be a smaller version of kind of their Mark series and what it's bringing forth. 36 millimeter case size, 10.4 uh, millimeters in thickness, a much more wearable lug to lug and a water resistance rating of 60 meters. Automatic SW300 on the inside, higher grade at that. Now with the Mark 20s coming out, I don't know if there's as many people looking in the direction of these watches because they were more on the fringe of its case size. I think many people that like IWC like something with a bit more substantial type of feel on wrist. That said, it's still an attractive way to get into a pilot watch from IWC. For our next brand, we have Anne Ordain with their Model 2 at 36 millimeters. Anne Ordain, Scottish brand, really what they're known for is going to be their enamel dials. Uh, they have really tried to scale production up on these while keeping quality. And given what is required when enameling a dial, you're talking about heated ovens at 800 to 1200 degrees Celsius. Uh, for Fahrenheit, that's 1400 degrees uh, to over 2192 degrees in Celsius. So uh, very, very meticulous process. Failure rate is high for their dials. Uh, enamel, assembly, and regulation all done in-house. Love what this brand represents, and I think they're doing a remarkable job. Uh, this is their Model 2. Manual SW210 on the inside, 36 millimeter case, 11 millimeters of thickness, and a 43 millimeter lug to lug. Shifting over to Germany, we have Nomos with the Club Campus 36. The Club Campus collection has now extended to so many different dial colors. And along with the Ahoy family, this is the other pillar within Nomos's catalog where color 
really comes to the forefront. You can get these with a Sapphire Exhibition back, but you are paying a bit more in the process, but that gives you a view of the alpha manual caliber on the inside. At 36 millimeters for Nomos, these wear much longer at the lug to lug. You're talking about 47 millimeters on that lug to lug dimension. So I would say this wears like a 37. Another great thing about these watches, 100 meters of water resistance while remaining thin, 7.9 millimeters in thickness while giving you some sporty upside. Now here we're gonna mention Rolex another time and I think you absolutely have to mention them because there's a couple other watches that you could include for Rolex. Thinking Oyster Perpetual, I'm gonna make that my honorable mention. Instead, I'm gonna go with the Rolex Explorer. The same way the Datejust was so responsible for establishing 36 millimeters as a case size for Rolex, the Explorer also deserves major kudos in that department as well. And just in general for being the established point in principle uh, design language for the larger arena of Rolex sports watches. If you look at those early Submariner references, you would see the direct connection to the early Explorer design. Here you have the 124270 returning to form at 36 millimeters. You had 39 millimeters for many years. Now we have 36 and 40, which feels like a good split in terms of case sizes, 11.5 millimeters in thickness and a 43.1 millimeter lug to lug with 100 meters of water resistance and the Rolex caliber 3230 on the inside. And for our final 36 millimeter watch, we have the Chopard Alpine Eagle 36 millimeters. Now the Alpine Eagle at 36 millimeters actually could be viable for way more people than maybe even the conventional Alpine Eagle just because of it wearing a little bit larger uh, potentially with its integrated design. And Chopard as of late, I think is just on a roll in terms of their different designs and what they're bringing forth. But the Alpine Eagle I think was one of those watches that helped establish this momentum. 36 millimeter case, 8.4 millimeters in thickness, and then the automatic Chopard 09.01C on the inside, still getting 100 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and this very intriguing spiral type of dial that is beautifully finished uh, on both that dial surface and beyond on the case on a larger scale. But all right, guys, that's my list looking at some of the best 36 millimeter watches in the industry. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, would appreciate that. Also, I, again, just could not cover everything in this list. Uh, this is a longer video, I know, but I uh, wanted to use this as a good point of just maybe jumping off for your research uh, as you're maybe looking at this specific case size. Are there some other watches that you would recommend at 36 millimeters? Are you an owner of a watch at 36 millimeters that people should absolutely check out? Uh, I think there's a lot of things that had to be included here, you know, the date just, uh, the day date. There's just so many things that you could include in this list. Uh, I also don't want to have too much be dominated by one specific brand. Also definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And how we're able to fund all of our productions on the channel is through selling watches on our site. So we know you could buy a watch in many different places. You are no limit of options to buy a watch. Uh, but if you are in the market, we would love to have your business because it allows us to continue to do what we do here. And we love what we do. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.